So guys, welcome back to the channel. And in the last episode, it was received really well actually. I'm really enjoying reading all your comments and enjoying the thrill of this build. Um, in the last episode, we showed you the vehicle in question. We even got the engine mounted with its dual with its new clutch set up, all mounted up to the Defender gearbox, mounted up to the original transfer box of the Discovery. And in this episode, I think it's gonna be a bit of a technical episode, if you will. We're gonna be doing the fuel lines, the fuel system, um, and things like the standalone engine harness because we're gonna have to get this thing up and running. We're gonna do the exhaust system, work out how that's all gonna work. And obviously we wanna do uh, as little work as possible and keep this thing as factory as possible. Now the, the Land Rover 300 TDI fuel lines are insufficient for a TD5 because they're very small. So we're gonna have to pull up the whole fuel line system and we're gonna try and graft in a TD5 fuel pump into the tank. Oh, I don't think it's gonna work. We're gonna then try and get a fuel filter uh, head from a TD5 we then try and run TD5 lines all the way up. Uh, we aren't gonna be using TD5, um, you know, the hard lines because nothing fits onto a Discovery 1, so they wouldn't sit quite right. So we are gonna be using bra uh, cotton braided fuel hose rated to R7, which is a higher PSI rating, so this is a fit and forget conversion. But we have ordered the quick connect fixing, so they click all in together like a factory fuel line. So it'll all be serviceable, looks original, blah, blah, blah. Um, so that's what, that's what we're doing today. We're literally gonna drop the tank down now, and I'm actually quite skeptical and a little bit nervous because uh, one of the shortfalls of a Discovery 1 is all the rust on the boot floor. And I haven't pulled up the carpet yet to have a look, but obviously when the tank's down, we're going to get a full look at the boot floor, see what's going on there. Uh, in the last episode, I did also say that this is quite a good rust-free example. Um, turns out it's not. <laughs> There's a few little bits on it. It's, it's, it's a pretty good one, but it has been on the road, obviously, for 30-odd years. So I think realistically, the inner wings, they have been repaired, but... Since I'm doing that conversion, the, the front headlight buckets and the battery trays look a bit rotten and a little bit questionable. So I think we're gonna go ahead and order some inner wings. Um, I'm not gonna go through the welding ones with the, the YRM panels, they're very good. But because this isn't a, uh, we're not doing a historic build or anything like that, this, is, this isn't a, a, a G-Wack edition or anything amazing. We're just gonna get the fully built up assembled bolt-on versions, just so that it can be structurally sound, does the job, you don't see them anyway. Um, and they're slightly, they've changed the design of them so they don't rot out as quickly. So I'll order those bits, but today we're gonna to be doing the fueling, having a look at this conversion and what it's gonna be taking to get this thing up and running with the engine in its place. This should be another great episode and I hope you'll enjoy it. Grab a drink, this one's gonna be fun. Very similar size to a TD5. I'm wondering about the sender plug though. I mean, we can make that work. Yeah, make it work. <laughs> See, look, Discovery, better. Yeah, why? Well, like. Built in the same years as well yeah. as the Defender, but. Just right, grab done. the other side, Kieran. Oh, no. Crispy, crispy. Oh. To be fair, I thought it was going to be worse. Why? I'll take no time at all and pull it out. Yeah. So we're going to have to reuse that rig. I'd imagine so. Haven't we got a... S we have got a spare line around somewhere. We've got rings. So we could try the ring to see yeah. drive fit without the pumping. Looks taller, doesn't it? That, the height of that. Uh, I don't know, not, oh my god. Oh, 
that's very different. I don't think it's going to work with the bottom of the tank here. If you've seen inside the tank, it's like a little. Um, is that part of the fuel? Is that so, so basically, that, that's doing what this is doing. So it basically stores a bit of fuel in there for when you're bombing it around corners and stuff and you don't get fuel surge. I'm going to try and see if I can get that out. Okay guys, so what you've just sort of seen us do there is we're trying to fit a Defender 90 fuel tank in-tank pump into the 300 TDI tank. Now obviously a 300 TDI has a mechanical lift pump on the engine. It doesn't get pumped up to the high pressure pump. It just drags it from the fuel tank, which means that TD5 won't run without a fuel pump. <clears throat> And I don't want to run an external setup because I want this to be as standard an OEM as possible using standard parts. Uh, the TD5 looks like the pump will sit in the actual tank itself, but we've got like an internal baffle which we're going to have to remove. If we remove it and it doesn't work, then we've scrapped the whole tank and we're going to have to run an external pump. But uh, we think it's going to work, so we're about to just drain all the fuel, twist out that baffle, offer up the 90 and see what happens basically. <laughs> So this is how we run a BMW setup, and this is our literally <laughs> an in-shop fuel tank system. So we've got uh, an inline pump and then an inline filter, and that's what this car would have to run should this whole setup not work. Uh, the BMW pump will run a TD5 no problem at all. The TD5 is typically overcomplicated how it all does its fuel system, but just for ease of installation and the longevity of this vehicle going forwards, it makes sense for me to try and utilise a TD5 pump, uh, considering that Land Rover ran that setup you can see the actual fuel pump is that unit there this this whole cradle setup we can't put that pump into here the tdi has a two pump outlet this has a four i believe the standalone engine harness we've got is also utilizing a td5 pump head so we'll see what happens stay tuned pull it off uh. Oh, no! Well, I hate diesel. This <laughs> might work. <laughs> Is that going to obstruct the fuel? Fuel system. <laughs> what? Um, well, that looks like it's going to work legitimately. Yeah. <laughs> we find ourselves in a very, very tough situation. The not so rotten Discovery One turns out is quite rotten. And uh, so far we need front inner wings. I think we're gonna have to do some, some saving. I mean, the reason why we need the front inner wings is, where's the torch, Matt? Don't come back here just yet. This is chaos. Have a look under here. Front inner wings, typical battery box and headlight tray. It's one of these things. Why? Why do I do it to myself? Uh, the other side is just the same. The footwell's a little bit crusty. The seals are okay. It's not a bad one. It's just not the best one. Uh, the best one, at least 30 years on the road. But 
we started having a little poke around with the boot floor and I welded a little strip above it. That's not so bad, the boot floor seems to be okay. The bit above the tailpipe, um, it, realistically I think we're gonna be doing a boot floor and two side aprons um, once it's up and running, once you put it back in the shop, blah, blah, blah. It's actually okay for now, but I would just prefer it if it had a new, a new boot floor and the rest of it, like all Discovery ones. Um, the concerning bit is on the chassis the A-frame cross member that goes between the two, you can't buy one for a Discovery, so we're having to salvage it. Come and have a look at this. So there was um, basically the fuel tank carrier bracket. It literally just holds the fuel tank. All behind here, it was totally rotten. And the only thing we can do is chop all the rot out, cut in a perfect template and save this piece before it goes too far. Um, Luckily, this seems to be the worst of it. And Discovery One chassis is usually pretty good. It's not like a Disco Two with a whole rear half end uh, completely destroys. It's actually pretty good. I've done a little patch here, but this piece is um, frustrating because we want it to be on the fuel system and getting this thing up and running, but I just won't have a car that's not satisfactory to drive sort of thing. So a little bit delayed, but we're just about to go to the farm. The farmer said that he's got some, I, I don't want to repair this stuff with like one mil. One more thick steel, it needs to be at least two realistically. Um, I don't want to put three in, I will if I have to. But yeah, we're about to, about to cut the farm, see if the farmer has some two mil steel so we can get this thing welded today. Then tomorrow, hopefully we can get our fuel system underway, our standalone engine harness. But yeah, this has been a bit of a setback. Um, old Land Rovers, it's the way it is I suppose. But yeah, let's cut the farm, see what we can find. Let's have one. That's about right, isn't it? Yeah, it doesn't. Look, I mean, it might be long enough. Look. See how long it is. What did we need? What's the measurement? 40 by 15. What is it? 36. Probably two little squares there, can we? 28 by 36. I'm sure we can do something with it. That looks yeah. like a reasonable size, even if we just did a little square next to it. Yeah. It's only a couple Should do. Magnet. Yeah. You're stealing it. Look, grease comes as well. Farmer's got better stuff than us. Is that okay? Yeah, it's fine. Do you need all of it? Yeah. Well, about three quarters of a mil. Three quarters of a mil. Yeah. Well, you've got some left. Yeah, it's a handy bit. Why need that whole piece? I'll print what I don't use back. Yeah, fine. Thanks, mate. Appreciate it.
So guys, what you've just seen me weld up there is the A-frame cross member just there. So we've mounted that up and I just need to repair the fuel tank carrier bracket, which is here. So I'm gonna go over to the bench, make a supporting plate here, weld that to that and we should be good to go. Okay guys, so I'm slightly bored of welding and I'm conscious that this episode is just about repairing that rear upper A-frame cross member and showing you a little bit about, bit about the build. But I wanna kind of talk about these new parts we've got here um, and where it's gonna be going in the next episode. And then today I think we're gonna finish up with the exhaust assembly and see what we can do and get this thing mocked up properly with a proper exhaust. So on the table here, uh, Bertie's very kindly just laid everything out for me. So we've got a number of items here to help with this conversion. And I think the main idea here is the standalone engine harness. I saw a couple of comments in, in the uh, comment section about how is it gonna run, because obviously you've got a Discovery One and a Defender engine. And the easiest way to do this would be using a standalone engine harness. And what I mean standalone, you can essentially run this engine with three wires. So this standalone engine harness will fool the car and the engine. It's a, it's a stripped back version of a full engine harness and body harness that would originally you'd find in a Defender. Uh, you can actually pretty much get a very basic Defender TD5 harness because there's no central locking, stuff like that, but this deletes the immobiliser circuit. So literally all we've got here is the ECU plug, the body harness plug to run a fuel pump, and then it just plugs into all the, all the sensors on the engine, and you've literally just got a run, running standalone harness. Um, you connect to the ignition barrel with about three connections, turn the key, it'll power up the ECU, it'll do its checks, and they've also deleted what we need off of it so that it can just run, and it's literally just a turnkey solution. So it's the easiest way to do a conversion, and obviously having a brand new engine wiring harness makes a lot of sense because we know that we don't have a 20-year-old engine loom sitting in the engine bay. So in terms of conversions, the easiest way to do this is a standalone engine harness, and that is what we've got here provided by Pace Automotive. So they can build you any kind of harness. They built us this one. Not a sponsored episode, just great product. Hopefully it all works. Um, second up, we've got a starter motor. It's missing off this engine. I think we'll use it for something else. Uh, this, this engine came out of a, an, an AC car, so it had aircon. This Discovery does not have AC. I do not intend to put AC in it because it's quite basic. I quite enjoy that. But that means we're gonna be losing the AC compressor off of the engine. Now, if we lose the AC compressor, the auxiliary belt that runs that AC pump will be too long. So we're gonna delete that with just a regular Defender TD5 non-AC and non-ACE, which is the, um, the ACE RAM, the steering kind of adjustable part just by using a simple belt. So we switch that over. I don't want to delete the rear prop donor. Now, it's quite a common modification for Discovery One where you can uh, have a four pin bolts uh, on the back of the prop, converted to a solid like a, like a Defender. I don't fancy that. These are 12 quid. And it, I think it's gonna provide some form of extra comfort when you take up the slack in the drivetrain. Obviously, we have got a single mass flywheel that we put in provided by Loft, and that is gonna be sending, there won't be as much reduction in, um, the slack taken up by the drivetrain. Hopefully that donut will give us a little bit more comfort when we take up drive. So we're gonna be fitting one of those and it comes with all the new bolts as well. And next thing up, we have a Discovery 2 uh, slave uh, master to slave for the clutch. Obviously the slave is now over the other side of the engine block, the original Discovery 1 um, hardline will not reach. So we have a braided solution here. That will go to the slave, that will go to the master. Bish bash bosh, nice and easy. Um, we have our original TD5 fuel filter head. This is a brand new item. And we're gonna try and mount this in the engine bay with the original 300 TDI filter six. Then we're gonna have our R7 rated cotton braided fuel hose connected to a number of connectors which aren't here yet, which is fr quite frustrating. I'm hoping next week there will be. Um, we've got a couple of bump stops. We've got our fuel pump connection because we've managed to sort the TD5 pump. And we managed to, we've got a brand new one here. And we managed to mate it perfectly into the 300 TDI fuel tanks. I'm really happy about that because I was slightly concerned that we would have some kind of external pump set up and it might not be the run, right pressure to run this engine. So that's really nice that we've got that sorted. Then we've gone for the all important EGR delete. Want to get rid of that, make this engine as simple as possible, last as long as possible without getting choked up. Anyway, onto the exhaust section. Now, I've ordered every exhaust available under the sun to try and make out what's gonna go on here. From what I can work out, we've got the downpipe decap section from a TD5 which is mounted and that cannot be changed. We can mess around with it, but there's no point. It sits in the perfect position just underneath the transfer box. I wanna keep the Discovery One back box 
because I think it looks quite nice and OEM and I don't fancy having this weird side X or anything like that. I, I don't want this thing to be a, a race car, but I don't want it to be super quiet. Anyway, because we've got a 100 inch chassis here and a Defender, you've either got a 90, 110 or 130. I've got a 90 center, I've got a 110 center and I've got a Discovery 2 center. And somehow we're gonna make the mid pipe work. I appreciate I could probably just go and get a custom center pipe. I might do in the future. But for now, we're gonna hang the back box and work out exactly how we're gonna be making this thing. At least mock up mode to get this thing having an exhaust until we decide to replace it, if we decide to replace it. Who knows, we're pretty good, we might be able to smash it. So let's get cracking with that. So guys, after chopping up a Discovery 2 center, a Defender 90 center, and a 110 center, it ends up, it's just a Defender 90 center with 100 mil welded on the back and everything slips together like battery. We've just got to remake this hanger. To be honest, I was thinking about sending it to a custom exhaust place to have this, this center remade absolutely perfect. But to be honest, I think I'll just spend a little bit of time, de -de -connect, disconnect this, and then just make this hanger a bit nicer, clean it all up, give it a coat of VHT black, and that'll be as good as any other exhaust system. It's all leak free, the welding's all good. And it all mounts up as factory, standard back box. And it will sound a little bit throaty because obviously we've got that center delete and it's a decap pipe. But a little bit challenging this episode because obviously we've, we've finished all the welding on the back of this cross member and that's what really slowed us down and our fuel connections aren't here. So it'll be exciting when we can get all of this together. My plan is to get this thing up and running in the next episode. Do we think it's possible? Yeah. Next episode, I don't think it's possible. Hopefully, standalone harness, fuel system, turn the key, maybe even a first road test. It's been a little bit challenging this week because of all the setbacks with the welding, and we've still got to do inner wings, etc. But I'm hoping next episode should be tank. All done. We've got the exhaust done at least. We can get the tank in, get the standalone harness, get the fuel lines, get it started, and go out for a little cruise, see what it feels like. And then we can get our things up brakes, suspension, all the fun stuff. But not that far away, but this episode had to happen. It has to be one of those episodes. I'm, I'm, thank you so much if, you, if you've watched this long. Thank you for sticking about. Thank you. Do drop a comment. Thank you for watching. Think about subscribing. Give us a follow on TikTok and uh, Instagram at Juice Motors. And stick around and we'll see you guys for the next interesting episode. Like, have you sorted the air, um, as in the air intake? <coughs> Haven't sorted the intake. Haven't sorted the... All I've got to think about is intake. Okay. I think air intake air intake the rest of it I mean you can leave it off the turbo but I'm pretty sure a standard TD5 Defender or even 300 TDI airbox yeah 
just we'll just have to it. make up a bit of silicon. It should be pretty straightforward. That's a good point, actually. Um, air system. But a ra radiator sits there. Intercooler, we need to make an intercooler mount. We can get this thing on a road test, I'm sure. In the next episode, Bertie. <laughs> <So> <laughs>